It's nearly August, and I've got a huge pile of dried leaves left over from last fall. These have had nearly nine months to decompose, and as you can tell, some of them are well on their way to becoming leaf mold, and others are still very clearly leaves. And if you don't know what leaf mold is, it's one of the greatest ways to increase the quality of your garden soil so that you can grow even healthier plants. But it's hard to get because leaves take a while to fully decompose. So I got an idea. Over the next three months, I'm going to run an experiment to see how to most effectively decompose dried leaves so that this fall, you can get a head start on creating your own leaf mold that might just be ready to use by next spring. For this experiment, I'm bagging up seven individual paper bags full of leaves, each of which has a unique set of ingredients added to see how the leaves respond, how quickly they decompose, and what happens once a few months have passed. For bag number one, I'm just putting the leaves in there with nothing added, and then I'm raking out the leaves into six different piles that I'll add ingredients to. I'm also running over the leaves with a lawnmower to break them up a bit. Not able to get them fully chopped up, but even a little bit is gonna help decomposition because the surface area will have increased, giving the microbes an easier time digesting them faster. For pile number two, I'm adding water straight up as a sort of just additional control pile. For pile three, I'm saturating the piles with Jadon microbial solution. For pile four, I brewed up some liquid IMO. For pile five, I've got some Jadam liquid fertilizer. And then pile six is a combination of everything, because why not? I simply added the ingredients to the piles of leaves, mixed them up, and bagged them, taking extra care to label my bags so that I could keep careful track of which bag contained which ingredients. Now, I should say that the purpose of the ingredients was to infuse the leaves with substances that might be able to help them break down a bit faster. The leaves already have fungi and bacteria on them that are actively decomposing them, but this is a great way for us to give them an additional boost. For the Jadam liquid fertilizer, we're adding a good amount of nitrogen along with some anaerobic bacteria. Everyone's afraid of anaerobic bacteria, but as you can learn from Young Sung Cho, maybe we can actually chill out a little bit from them when it comes to making healthy soil. The Jadam microbial solution and the liquid IMO are adding aerobically fermented indigenous microorganisms. And I won't go into how to make these completely in this video. You can check out our other videos if you'd like to see how to make those, or you can download any of our free resources by hitting the link in the description or scanning the code on the screen. These brews were supposed to see what happens when you just add the most robust microbes from nature to a pile of leaves and let them sort of chew them down and see how fast we can get them to turn into leaf mold. The fungi and the actinomycetes are going to work on breaking down the tough lignin and whatnot in the leaves. I was really looking forward to seeing how these leaves all decomposed, each in their separate bags. But what I could have never anticipated was that an act of vandalism so heinous and destructive would stop this experiment almost as soon as it had begun. And that vandalism came in the form of my four-year-old son and then two-year-old daughter who saw my bags of leaves and thought, why not tear those to shreds and mix all the leaves into a big pile that we can jump into? Which, you know, if you're a toddler, is valid. You gotta give them credit, they're making their own fun. But, unfortunately, that meant that this experiment was basically ruined, and I will have to try another time. So, while I'm unable to show you the direct result of the labor that went into preparing this experiment, I can show you how those leaves are doing now, and hopefully I can inspire you to try something similar. We recently moved, and I'm probably one of the only people who would willingly bag up their leaves and bring them with me as I move across the state to bring them for their new garden. But I'm not messing around and I wanted those leaves. Welcome back to the channel, by the way. If you're new here, I'm Taylor and I help gardeners explore low cost, sustainable and regenerative growing techniques that are amazing. And while this experiment was sort of a bust, I'm gonna go ahead and crack into a few of these bags of leaves. I had to rebag them and I was out of paper bags, so boo, plastic, but what are you gonna do? Right, so hard to know exactly which of these leaves are what, but here's one, one bag of leaves. It's also pretty cold today, so we might get some frozen chunks, but you can see, you know, these leaves are not too bad. I mean, about where we where they were, but they kind of crumble pretty, pretty easily. Like you just rub them through your hands. That's pretty good, I would say. And then there's definitely some that is more, it's like closer. It almost looks like compost. And that's just leaves, just leaves and twigs, maybe a little bit of straw and some wood chips here and there. Pretty cool. 
I'm super happy with that. I wonder if there's any, any fungal chunks. That's just frost, I guess. So probably need to re-moisten these leaves if anything more is gonna happen, but that's not bad, honestly. I mean, that's decomposing pretty nicely. Here's another bag. Nice and frozen. Yeah, break apart pretty nicely. And yeah, I mean, that's not bad. It's like on its way to becoming leaf mold. It's not quite, but you know, rub it together, sift it. I could probably get some good leaf mold out of that. I'm pretty happy with that for one year old leaves. I think that's great. All right, so hopefully that tells you something about a few ways that you might be able to get your leaves to decompose a little bit quicker. Leaves are one of my favorite tools in my soil building toolbox. And maybe you've heard that before and are wondering what makes them so special. Well, there are a few reasons. First of all, leaves are pretty darn easy to find for free. Trees grow in most places, at least in the US. And from what I can tell, they're kind of a worldwide thing, trees. So likely they're available in some form to everyone. And with a few exceptions, the leaves that they drop are an excellent source of carbon material that can be used in a wide variety of ways throughout the garden. Second thing is that leaves break down relatively quickly into crumbly soil. They're not the fastest carbon rich material to do that, but they decompose pretty quickly. And as you can see here, especially when compared to wood chips and other woody material, they do a pretty good job. Another reason that leaves are special and often coveted is that they are typically a pretty clean source of organic matter. As far as materials that you can collect or purchase, leaves are among the least likely to be contaminated with sprays, pesticides, herbicides and whatnot, which can be tricky sometimes when you're trying to source clean straw or lawn clippings from neighbors. And lastly, leaves are one of the best sources of food for beneficial microbes, especially fungi, which makes them a really nice thing to have on hand for biology forward growers like yourselves. But now that you know what's so great about them, I wanna go through a few of the many uses for leaves because it's possible that you're not using them to their fullest potential, starting with just using them all on their own. Leaves are most obviously a great mulch. Now you can spread these out directly on your garden beds at any time of year. Obviously getting them down sooner rather than later is going to help them decompose faster and start nourishing your soil more quickly because the soil microbes are going to start cross-pollinating with the leaf microbes. If you spread them out straight up like this, you run a few risks. First of all, if you live in a windy area, whole leaves tend to come with a built-in sail, meaning the wind can easily sweep them right off your garden beds. And we made this mistake a few times, honestly, and it's frustrating to see them just blow away. The other thing that could happen is that when you apply them as a mulch whole, and they just sit there all winter, they can tend to mat quite a bit, which makes them a little bit difficult to plant into come spring. So a way around this is just to run them over with a lawnmower like you saw me doing in this video. Uh, you can chop them up a bit doing this. And this is gonna make them a little less likely to blow away because the wind isn't gonna quite catch them so easily and they're less likely to mat together and form a thick wall. Of course, another way around that is just to let them age a little bit and then you can just start to crumble them by hand like you saw me doing. So if you have patience, consider hanging on to your leaves a few years before starting to use them. Try collecting a double batch this year, if you can, so that you can let some decompose while you use others. This leaf mold is incredible stuff. It obviously acts as a great mulch, but it can also quickly incorporate itself into the soil and can be a great over, overall natural soil conditioner. Do not mix leaves into the soil because you're gonna be robbing nitrogen from the soil, but just placed on top, it's a great way to get that gradual integration naturally. Number one, you can use leaves as a natural mulch. Super simple, chop them up, age them, spread them. If you're using them as a mulch in your perennial garden though, where you're not gonna be planting into the soil much, you probably don't even need to bother chopping them up before spreading them across the soil. The second way that I'll highlight that you can use leaves is as an ingredient in your compost pile. Same rules apply for chopping them up. If you can, chop them up beforehand so that they don't mat in the pile, that'll slow down the decomposition speed. But overall, leaves are probably the ingredient that goes in every single compost pile that I make, no matter what. They're just great. Even whole, freshly fallen leaves are gonna decompose nicely if you get your compost pile balance right. Mix them with grass clippings. I actually saw someone recently comment that they, they just mixed 30 bags of leaves with 10 gallons of quail droppings, watered it down and got the pile to heat up right away. Even just doing something like that, mixing leaves with a nitrogen source helps them decompose a lot faster. A third way that you can use your leaves is in your worm bin, if you've got one. Worms love leaves. They're a great medium for them to live in. 
especially if you chop them up a bit. I found plenty of worms all on their own find their way into piles of leaves. Great stuff. Another livestock that really likes these as a bedding is chickens. We always put down leaves in our chicken coops because it's great for chickens to rummage through and sort of neutralize their manure. Chicken manure has a super high nitrogen content. Leaves have a high carbon content. So they balance each other out and your chickens will gradually shred your leaves for you. I like to spread out leaves for my chickens, let them rummage through for a few weeks until they settle and compress a little bit. And then I go in with a pitchfork and I make a new pile for the chickens to tear apart. This is a great way to keep your chickens entertained while also helping the, uh, keep the leaves aerated and keep them shredding. Of course, if you're making indigenous microorganisms stage three or the shelf stable Jadam microbial solution, leaves are a great source of carbon for those piles. And finally, one way that we have yet to trial, but I think that we'll run some experience this year, is using our leaf mold as a peat moss replacement in homemade potting mix. We currently make our potting mix out of compost, vermiculite, and cocoa core, but we'll save some of these leaves, specifically the ones that are really broken down, and we'll do a little bit of a side-by-side -side comparison. My concern for using the leaves is only that if they're not broken down enough, they could potentially soak up too much of the nitrogen found in the compost that is needed for young plant starts. So I might expect the seedlings to be a little bit more on the yellow side. I heard from someone recently in the comments that they trialed using leaves in their potty mix and it worked great. Let me know in the comments if you've done this before and how it turned out. Again, my guess is that we want those to be pretty thoroughly broken down so that they're a bit more neutral carbon wise, but it's hard to say without trying it myself. So stay tuned for that come seed starting season. All that said, with so many potential ways that you can use leaves in your garden, so long as you've got the space, there's really no reason not to stockpile these bad boys because they have infinite uses. They're free and they only get better with age. Now there are a couple warnings that I wanna give for using leaves because as amazing and as versatile as they are, there are a few things that you need to pay attention to. And there are really three things here. One, you gotta watch out for using certain trees leaves as mulch because certain leaves have antimicrobial properties that can mess with your soil. Black walnut tree leaves, for instance, contain what we call allelopathic compounds, which are just compounds that can suppress root growth and seedling establishment. Hickory and eucalyptus are a few other varieties that I've heard about that you need to watch for. Now using these in your compost piles at moderate amounts is gonna help process those compounds out. So it's not as though they have no use, but if you're growing these trees, it's probably best just to let the leaves lay where they fall once they've dropped off the trees and those will turn into nourishing soil for those trees over the years. Another thing to keep in mind is using leaves that are known to harbor pest larvae. We made the devastating mistake of mulching a number of our garden beds with oak leaves from a tree that was harboring tons of caterpillar larvae. So when those pupated, they had a nice food source waiting for them in the form of our baby tomatoes and squashes. Not ideal. So check to see if your leaves are common homes for insect eggs. And if they are, shred them up real good in advance or hot compost them in advance or just keep them away from your baby seedlings. Last thing to watch out for, and this isn't really the worst thing in the world, but if you're raking up leaves alongside pine needles and you've got a large amount of pine needles in there, that might change the way that you use them a little bit. Pine needles or any other conifer needles are a totally viable organic mulching material, but they do take quite a while to decompose. And they also contain antimicrobial qualities and resins so that they kind of slow down leaf decomposition. They're only good in chicken bedding in small amounts and worms don't really like them. I wouldn't use leaves and needles mixed together in potting mix or in my IMO piles. And I wanna make sure that there's not too many needles in my compost pile at any given time. A few in there is totally fine in my opinion, so no need to go picking them out by hand, but generally we wanna keep these separate and let them decompose on their own. I like to use my dried pine needles as fire starters and feedstock when I make my biochar because they combust really quickly. Just make sure that they're super dry because they can smoke a ton if they're not. Anyway, those are a few things to look out for when it comes to leaves. As far as how I'm gonna use these leaves in our garden and on our farm this year, I'm honestly probably gonna use them in every single way that I shared earlier. I'll reserve some for worm bedding. I'll mulch my garden beds with the really decomposed stuff. I'll compost it. I'll use them for IML3 piles and for the stuff that hasn't broken down all the way. I'll probably just let the chickens process a little bit more. Of course, I'm gonna make sure to set aside the most decomposed stuff for our potting mix experiment, and I'll also be using leaves, probably, maybe not these ones, but maybe some other leaves that I can get my hands on this season for starting some Hugo culture raised beds. And that's just where you pack the lower layers of the garden bed with carbon rich materials and it slowly decomposes over time. Let me know what you learned from this video or how you intend on using your leaves 
in the comments below or just say hi anytime that you leave a comment even a mean one helps the YouTube algorithm pick up our videos. So we always appreciate getting to hear from you. If you want to learn more about ways that you can use materials like leaves that you might find in and around your garden or where you live, you can check out our complete guide to homemade soil amendments. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.